DiscerningHearts.com presents Building the Kingdom of Love, Reflections with Monsignor John Essif. Monsignor Essif is a priest of the Diocese of Scranton, Pennsylvania. He has served as a retreat director and confessor to St. Mother Teresa of Calcutta. He continues to offer direction and retreats for the Sisters of the Missionaries of Charity. Monsignor Essif encountered St. Padre Pio, who would become a spiritual father to him. He has lived in areas around the world, serving in the Pontifical Missions, a Catholic organization established by St. Pope John Paul II to bring the good news to the world, especially to the poor. He continues to serve as a retreat leader and director to bishops, priests, sisters and seminarians, and other religious leaders. Building a Kingdom of Love, Reflections with Monsignor John Essif. I'm your host, Chris McGregor. What's on your heart today, Monsignor? The Feast of the Ascension. And this always sets us up. I think there's so much immature awareness, ideas, and thoughts, even among Catholics who seem to know better, or Protestants, or or Orthodox, that this entity called the Church, it is so sometimes in its people so unaware of the kingdom of God and the church. Where is it? When Jesus came into the world, he suffered, he died, and he rose. We know that happened in the year 33 and went back to heaven. This ascension into heaven, what was that? How do we see the ascension? Where did he go? Did he go up there? Is heaven up there? Where did he go? And when is he going to come back? The su- Such immature notions, I think many of us carry them in our minds. A lot of Catholics that I know, that I've met, and they somehow think that heaven is up there, that Jesus somehow kicked off his sandals, and then goes up, he's at the right hand of the Father, and he's drinking mint juleps, and he's sitting under some kind of lilac tree, smoking cigars, waiting to the end of the world, till when he sends the Holy Spirit at Pentecost to make the world Catholic or Christian. And and such an unawareness of the intimacy of the union of we, the church, with God. That the Trinity, where is the Trinity for us who are members of the church? The kingdom of God is within you. And so on this feast of the ascension, where did he go? Where is he now? When will he come back? When the 11 were on the, on the mountain with him at, in St. Matthew's gospel. At the end of that gospel, we read it, the 28th chapter, the 11 disciples set out for Galilee to the mountain where Jesus had arranged to meet with them. When they saw him, they fell down before him. Though some still hesitated, Jesus came up and spoke to them. And he said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, Make disciples of all the nations. Baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And teach them to observe all the commands that I gave you. And know that I am with you all days, even to the end of time. The Acts of the Apostles tells us that when they saw this, Jesus going up in a cloud, and they were standing there, and they see him disappear into the cloud, there were two angels standing there and saying to them, men of Galilee, why are you standing here looking up into the sky? This Jesus whom you have seen going up in that cloud is going to come again. Where did he go? as he disappeared from their sight. And when is he going to come back? 
So next Sunday, when we Catholics or all of us in the whole world have and experience Pentecost, the coming of the Holy Spirit, what is that for us? Both this Feast of the Ascension and the Feast of Pentecost. In the year 33, Jesus suffered and died and rose. That same Jesus, 40 days later, is preparing for this ascension. From that time on, Jesus has been in the church through the power of the Holy Spirit. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me, and therefore Jesus remains with us by the power of the Holy Spirit in whom we are baptized. Baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Where is the Trinity? Every single one of us can come into the presence of the Trinity by going into your own heart. There you will meet the Trinity. He dwells within us. So the activity of Jesus now is taking place in this entire world. Every place there is a baptized Christian. Wherever you may be, you can be one with him by the power of the Holy Spirit and you can be one with your Father, and you can enter into that Trinity by simply going in prayer into your heart. God remains with us. I am with you all days, even to the end of the world. He said in that, baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Teach them. This is where I think the failure is. Teach them all things that I have commanded you. And what are those things? That the kingdom of God is truly within you. What is the commandment that is most important for the kingdom? Love. Teach them to love. We enter into this kingdom through love. This is a story that's in our family and our whole family continues to remember this. My mother was delivering my baby brother. This was over 77 years ago, so I think that's how old my brother is now. While well, she was delivering him, and my dad was in the room, and the doctors were there, my mother actually died. My mother, she turned completely black, and she just, her whole system closed down. And I suppose if there were a machine there, she would have flatlined. And that's really what she did. And my brother was, un because he was a breech birth, there was a cord around his neck. The doctor took the cord from around his neck and somehow my mother was revived. And she's always told this story that she was going into this tunnel and as she was going, she was so happy to be there. She was on her way to heaven. No one saw her move from where she was. She was dead. And as she was going through this passageway, she always interpreted that she was on her way to heaven. And this very strong looking person that she always thought was St. Michael, who stopped her from her journey and said, no, you have to go back. It's not your time. You have much work to do yet. She always quoted those words. And then she said, I woke up. And everyone in that room, her mother, so many of the women that were there around her, she opened her eyes. She was on earth. Where is heaven? The kingdom of God is within you. All the years later, it was a January 21st day. She and my dad had gone to mass and they were living now in California. 
and she was 76 years old. She had a massive heart attack and my dad rushed her to the hospital. They again tried, but now she entered the kingdom. Where is my mother? She's in the kingdom. What did she learn in those years that she raised my brother and the rest of us was a mother and a grandmother and so many things that she did in, in a loving way. And everyone in our family sees as a really holy, saintly person. When that journey is complete, then we, as we learn our lessons of love, we pass from here to where? To there. Where? Into our hearts of love, where he dwells. You, on this Sunday, are in him, and you are with him, and you are connected to heaven through him, Jesus. We sing in the Mass today, through him and with him and in him. Where is it that you want to go to contemplate this great truth? Go within your heart. It is there that you will find the Trinity. There he wants to be on the throne. You are in him and through him and with him. When he ascended, when you were baptized, you were joined to him. What happened? He came down into you. He descended into your heart, where he now is on the throne of your heart. When you fail to love the Father, when you fail to love by the power of the Spirit. This is a call for universal love. We are called not only to love our family, we are called to love everyone. Our call is a universal cry for love. Let's listen to what Jesus says as he instructs his people on that hill in Galilee, go all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, make disciples of all the nations. Now, wherever you may be, in Omaha, in Pennsylvania, anywhere in the United States, anywhere in the world, go and make disciples of all the nations, baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teach them to observe all that I have commanded you. The sum of the commandments is to love, to love God. You can actually love the Father. You can love the Father as Jesus loves him through him who is in you, you can actually love every human being. And so the anger that you have toward your husband, toward some of your children for their disappointments to you, toward your sisters or your brothers, that love has to be, must be, can be universal. And that love must be for everyone. It has to be for our enemies. How far are we from the kingdom of God? This is what is going to reign over the entire world when every single baptized person takes seriously the command of Jesus to love universally. Teach them to do all that I have commanded you and know that I am with you always. Yes, even to the end of time. And so in this time, the church 
is in all the parts of the world. But the problem is we have such an immature awareness of the interiority of the church. The church is the kingdom of God and the kingdom of God is within you. Why is the world the way it is? Because heaven has not yet come down into me and through me come into this world. That time will come so much sooner when you and I, every single person who is called to be united with Jesus, God made every single person who is listening to this, every human being. God made you with a backspin. You know, when you threw a hoop out and you put a backspin on it, that's how God put you into this world. The backspin coming back to God is the Holy Spirit. Everything in you wants to come back to your creator. The way that you come back is Jesus. And you will begin to learn that so much better when the church becomes that instrument of God that he had called it to be. We here on earth are his body. We are one. He is not up there. He is in us. And when we begin to recognize that that's where he is, you are the first tabernacle that God has put into this world. God exists in this world through you and with you and in you. In the church, Jesus is here on earth and as well as in heaven. Monsignor? Yes? You had spoken about the call to love. And for many people, it, it's a struggle in a real way because you may be able to say, I will love them, but they bulk at you know, not only a terrorist or maybe the the terrorist was in someone's home, you know, a a parent that uh, was brutal or a spouse that was brutal. And they say, well, I, I can't love them. It's just, that is, there's no way I could have, I don't want to trivialize it, but you know, I can't have the warm fuzzies for this person. That's just too much. What would you say to that person who struggles with loving what seems to be the unlovable? Here, here's what, what I really believe that I don't and none of us have. There's not a single human being in this world that can do that. No one can. No one ever was able to. Ever since Adam and Eve, the only thing we have a potential for is sin. We are all going to hate our enemy. And that came into the world right after Adam and Eve's sin, when Cain killed his brother. We have no way of bringing that about. But ever since Jesus said, I will be in you and you will be in me, that he in us has that power. And so when I can't, then I I always have to turn to him who is in me. I think so many of the reasons why we fail to love is because we think I have to. Well, I can't. I can't love that, that whoever that was that killed my child. And when I see what he has done, I just hate him. And I always will. And I never will be able to forgive that person. But when he who is in me, if I turn to him and I see him in me, as uh, St. Maria Gretti did, when that person who killed her, when she was able to turn to Jesus in her, she forgave him and she, 
She truly loved him who was trying to hurt her and rape her. And so he killed her. She became that source of changing that person. But it wasn't her. It was Jesus in her. No human being can do that. But one came into this world, and his name was Jesus. And he is in you by your baptism. And you are in him. The power you have is his. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. I have this power. And I will give it to you. I will unite myself with you. You, human being, weak and broken. I, the Son of God, have taken human flesh just like yours. And when I took that on, I joined myself to every human being. Not only is it true that you can do that in me, through me, and with me, and the power that I have to do that, but the person you do it to, that person, person who was standing on the shore in, in Libya, they were killing those 20 Egyptian Christians and beheading them. That person who was a Muslim became a convert. He became a member of the body of Christ and he became baptized in blood. And he was the 21st member. So much is going on in the world today to show us that it is only love, only love, that's going to unite this world of ours. We are all ready to destroy ourselves with our nuclear bombs. And we are ready to kill ourselves. But we never, ever have to because of Jesus. Because there is a force and a power. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to Jesus. That Jesus is in you. You have a power far beyond anything that you could imagine. When you say power, it's, it's the power to love, isn't it, Monsignor? It's the power. Love is a greater power than the nuclear power. Love is the greatest power in the world because that's who God is. That will overcome everything because that's what the cross did. God sent Jesus into the world and he loved us and he laid down his life for us. Greater love than this no one has than to lay down one's life for his friend. And if you look at the cross, then you will see who killed him. You did. I did. Because he did this for us. He wanted me and you to have that same power that he did. We were baptized with the sign of the cross. We were signed with the cross. And we were baptized into the Trinity. Baptized in the name of the Father. And he is in us. And the name of the Son. And in the name of the Holy Spirit. We are a tabernacle. As you said, we have the power to love. And I think sometimes it's easier for us, when, as odd as it may sound, to pray and to hope for the conversion of those that we see on, in other places, on television and the news, across the spans, away from us. What about those moments when we fail to love those neighbors that are right next to us? And what, and what I mean by that is, the terrible scourge that we do to our own communities when we gossip, when we, we speak of others. I've been in churches where right in, right in the sanctuary, right before the tabernacle or in the Holy of Holies, people, they've just finished praying, and then they spend time tearing down those around them and at inflicting that that type of thing. We do, we're just not aware of the chaos and the war we create with our our tongues. Yes, we're so we're so unaware that right there within us is Jesus. While we again add to his pain and his suffering. Because that that Christ who is within us 
wants so much to radiate through us. And what we will let radiate through us is the viciousness and the, 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 the gossip and the smallness of who I am. I reflect the, the horror of who I am rather than the beauty of who he is. It's not so much that the world sees in uh, a priest or a bishop or a Catholic. It's not so much that they see how bad you are. It's that they fail to see who you really are. You fail to display who is really in your heart. And he so much wants to radiate through you. He wants to so much say the kindness and the love through your tongue that is failed to be said, that is failed to be heard. The act of love by your hands that failed to be done. The act of kindness that fails to be brought into the world. And this world every day, since we fail to recognize who is within us, this world is left so much colder and so much more dark because I have failed to let the light shine through me. He is in me and I am in him. That's the truth. God bless. You've been listening to Building a Kingdom of Love with Monsignor John Issif. To hear and or to download this episode, along with hundreds of other spiritual formation programs, visit discerninghearts.com, or you can find it within the free Discerning Hearts app. This has been a production of Discerning Hearts. I'm your host, Chris McGregor. We hope that if this has been helpful for you, that you will first pray for our mission, which is to offer authentic and rock-solid spiritual formation freely to souls around the world. And if you feel us worthy, please consider a charitable donation, which is fully tax-deductible, to help support our efforts. But most of all, we hope that you will tell a friend about DiscerningHearts.com and join us next time for Building the Kingdom of Love with Monsignor John Essef.